Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.0. In this video, I'm going to talk about no-click navigation. So to start, I've put together a story called, of course, no-click navigation. So the idea of this no-click navigation, of moving between passages and clicking on links by moving the mouse over them, has been around actually for a pretty long time in Twine. However, the most famous, and probably arguably the best use of it, was by Christine Love in Even Carol Girls Bleed. And if you haven't played it, I definitely go recommend you go do so right now. I'll wait. Okay, you're back. <laughs> so let's take a second to talk about the mechanics of no click. So in older versions of Twine, to achieve this effect, this no click navigation, you needed to rewrite how passages were called, then you needed to include the jQuery framework or write your own cross browser code. It was definitely, it was definitely messy, and it wasn't done very often. Uh, however, in Twine 2.0, it's got you covered through the mouse over sensor macro. This detects when connected by a name tag to some hook when the mouse is over that text, and then it does something. It's also part of a number of sister sensor, sensor changer combination macros. Lots of S sounds there. And there are lots of options here. We have mouse over replace, mouse over append, mouse over prepend, mouse out replace. Lots of different options for when things happen when the mouse is over something or when the mouse leaves some text. So let's look at an example of using those with the mouse over append. So if we wanted to replicate some of the mechanics of even cowgirls bleed, we can start by using the mouse over a pen macro, like I was just talking about. And each time the mouse is over a link or over some text, we want it to add a pen more content. Because in even cowgirls bleed, everything loads vertically. It loads underneath the previous passage of the previous text. And so the whole story starts at the top and then ends at the very bottom as each things are added in. So if we want to use the mouse over a pen macro to do that, we sort of need to understand how the mouse over a pen macro works. So to start, it's a sensor changer macro. In that it senses something and then changes something. So we use it like this, where we have a name tag, remember that starts with the bar and always points towards some hook. So we have a name tag attached to some hook and then of course we call the macro itself, the mouse over append macro. We use the name tag and it st always starts with a question mark when we use a name tag in the invocation of some sensor or sensor changer macro. And then we have some content we want to be appended. So we have a name tag, we have a hook, but we're calling the macro with the name of the name tag and then something happens. Some content is appended in this case or something else else happens when you use the other macros. So to demonstrate that, we can do it like the following. I set up some blue text here, and when I mouse over it, we see more contents added. So what if we wanted to automate this process a little bit? So as I've talked about, within, within even Cargo's Bleed, the passages are loaded underneath each other, and they build one long vertical story. So how would we approach doing that with the macros and twine? I mean, we could do it like I showed in one passage, but if we wanted a really long story with multiple passages and different effects and sort of more complex than that just previous example. Well, one way we might approach this process is by combining the mouse over append, like you saw in the previous passage, with a display macro. The display macro works by calling some passage and just displaying it. It takes whatever content is in that passage and sort of injects it into the current passage. So by calling the display passage, we can embed other passages within one single passage. And with the mouse over append, when the mouse is over some text, we can have some other passage be appended in that place. So like I just said, so with each mouse over event, Twine could display a separate passage. So let's look at how that would work in action. So I've put together a little story here. You face a locked door, the bandits are hot on your heels. You examine the hinges, the seam of the door, but you decide the only option is to shoot the lock. So let's put the mouse over, shoot the lock. We have more content added, more content being displayed from another passage. 
So we broke the lock, we ripped the door open, but it seems like the only way out is through the window. So we run towards the windows and we shoot the window, classic action hero style. And then we jump out and we begin to fall. So let's look at one more step towards how this would be automated programmatically. So as a final step towards automating this whole thing, we need to leverage the power of the hook macro. This is sort of a lesser known macro that allows us to programmatically create name tags. As I'll show when we look at the code, when we invoke sensor macros and changer macros, we need some type of name tag. And we don't want to spend, if we're creating a large story, a whole lot of time creating one name tag after another, after another, after another. It gets kind of tedious. So one way we can get around that is by using the hook macro to, like I said, programmatically create name tags for us. So the hook macro looks like this. It works on some value, some variable, and then is invocated on some hook. And then when it's ran, this whole section then becomes a name tag. So for our use in the story, instead of writing different name tags, we can create one, we can store its value, and then change it and have the hook macro create more name tags as we need them. So let's jump back into the action one more time. Oh, so it was a hard landing when we jumped out the window. So we stumble to our feet, and what we think are enemies, we take our gun out, shoot the first, just a tree! <laughs> so we catch ourselves, uh, it took more, the fall took more out than we thought it did, so we push forward, we think there's another bandit, and we shoot it. Oh, it's another tree, is this the end? <laughs> Not much of a narrative there, I will admit. Uh, so let's take a, a second to look at the code before I go back to uh, the, the editor and, and show you it uh, in practice here. So as a last start, as a last part to start, uh, we want to define two different variables. We need a text part and we need a number part. And I'm going to go over this in more detail once I go back and look at the code within the passages. But I want to take a second to just show how this would work. So we have a sort of a start of a name tag and we have some number we're going to append to the name tag each time. Now the reason for this is that in JavaScript upon which Twine works and upon which Twine script is run cannot start with a number. It's sort of a carryover from many other older programming languages that you can't have a variable that it's just a number. So you need some text and then you can put numbers at the end to create new ones. So we have some part of a text name tag, and then we have some number. And then for every passage where it's needed, we again have the hook invocation. We have a variable that serves as the name tag. We have some text and a hook here. And then we're calling mouse over append, and we're using the text macro. So the text macro works kind of like it name, its name implies where it returns some variables, some combination of things as text. So because mouse over append as a sensor or a sensor changer macro needs the question mark at the front of the name tag, then we need to call text and append and prepend the question mark to the value of the variable no click. So as no click changes, it remains the same name tag. So then again we see the content to be appended and then we have these last two steps where we increase the click counter by one that's the number part at the end of the name tag and we set no click to be the new name tag value to the previous no name tag plus the text value of the variable click counter. So each time this section of code is being run, click counter is being increased by one, so it goes from zero to one to two, etc. And then it's being added to no click. So no click gets a new value each time. So each time this section of code is being run, it's dynamically creating a new name tag and then associating that new name tag with mouse over append to do something. 
So instead of us writing, like I said, new name tags for each new thing, we can have Twine just create them for us as many as we need. And we can just use this code, little code chunk here, again and again and again. Okay, so I've sort of walked you to the very end. Let's go all the way back to the beginning and look at the code within the editor. So to start, it's pretty straightforward here. I'm using the link macro to create a link using the string even cowgirls bleed. And I'm using the go to URL macro. It's a holdover from older versions of Twine that isn't used very much. It sort of isn't very well known. Uh, but if you want to create something that goes to some URL, some outside source outside your story, you can use this. And so if you haven't already seen even Cargo's Bleed, this is the URL you can go to to go look at it. And so then we move over to the mechanics of no click. And again, it's very straightforward. We see the text that was displayed. We see the unordered list of the various names. And then we move over to the mouse over append. And then again, we see the code. Now, if you haven't seen this before, you can use two marks here to escape some code so it isn't run by Twine. If you want to show an example, as I have here, you can use them to put code in, two on the front and two on the back, and then Twine doesn't run it, it just shows that code. And of course, I put an emphasis by using an asterisk at the end of it. And then here was the code that was actually run. So we have the name tag, no click, associated with this whole hook. Then within that hook, we're using the color macro, use the color blue to change the content of this hook, mouse over this to add some content. And then down here, when the mouse is over this, the mouse over append, associated with the name tag, no click, and the name tab, no click, is associated with this hook, we append the content that's within the brackets. Look more content, and then a link to the passage. What about automating this process, though? And notice, too, I have an explicit name, the no click right here. Then again, we have a very straightforward passage that discussed what I was talking about. And then we move over to let's look at that in action. And then we see you have no click again. And then we're calling the display macro, as I described, to display the content of the passage inside the room. So now within inside the room, I have a different name tag. Now the reason for this is that when name tags are used, they have to be unique within a passage. Because the display macro displays, calls the content of, the pa of another passage within the, the passage that called it, those same name tags can't be used again. So if I used no click within inside the room, it would actually be invoked immediately as soon as it was displayed because as far as Twine knows, that name tag was actually used. Something happened. And so because we're using the display macro, we need different names and different for different name tags. So in this case, I have no click two. I've just stuck a number at the end. And that's why, as I talked about before, we need some type of automation so we don't have to keep creating new name tags all the time to replicate the mechanics of even cowgirls bleed. And so again, right here, we talk about using the hook macro. We see the hook macro is invoked using some variable. And then the macro is attached to some hook. And then in action, it creates in runtime a name tag attached to that hook. So we are once more into action. And then again, like I explained at the end of the story when I ran it, we need to start by setting a couple of variables. We start with the text part, the no click, and then the number part, the click counter. And we have a, a bit of narrative here. And then we have 
the code I showed at the end. We have the hook uh, invocation of a hook macro, creating the name tag, attached to some hook, in this case, again, using the color macro to create this text as blue, and we're making it strong by using two asterisks, and then again, using the text macro to create, to dynamically create the name of the name tag that was dynamically created earlier. Then we have some content, and then we're adjusting the value of our dynamically created name tag, and then we're calling into the forest. For into the forest, it's the same code again. We use our new value of our new dynamically created name tag. Then we adjust it so if we wanted to use it again, we could. And then we see the final code. That's again just discussing how that code works in practice. Now, for the most part, <laughs> you probably won't want to go through all the trouble of I did to create this big dynamically created name tag process. Usually you probably <laughs> will want to do just this, to use the mouse over append macro, to have something loaded when the mouse goes over it, to use the no click navigation. It's simply like this. You have some name tag, it's associated with some hook, and then you use the mouse over append to invoke some action for that associated name tag. So for, for this example right here that we've looked at before, we have no click. No click is associated with this hook. And so when the mouse is over this hook, it appends some content. And then in our example, it appends inside the room. So <laughs> sort of a complicated look at the way Twine 2.0 has actually made no-click navigation much easier by using the sensor macros mouse over with its combination with its sister combination macros. We have like mouse over append, mouse over prepend. We can actually have content be prepended instead of appended. We could have replaced stuff. We could have acted when the mouse is out. That is when the mouse moves off something after first entering it and any number of other ways we could have done this. But creating in a way the mechanics, creating cam mechanics similar to even Cowgirl's Bleed, we can, as I showed, use mouse over append and the display macro to have stuff be appended each time by calling the contents of, displaying the contents of some other passage each time. Sort of a <laughs> complicated overview of how to move through the no-click navigation examples and how to actually recreate the mechanics in a small way of even Cowgirl's Bleed. Which again, if you haven't checked out, definitely you should do so. Thanks for watching.